Good evening. On behalf of the graduating class of 2020, I would like to welcome everyone to this evening's ceremony. At this point, I would like to pause for a brief moment of reflection. Please rise for the singing of our national anthem performed by Lydia Martin and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would now like to introduce this evening's senior six speakers. Our first speaker will be Elise Barnes. Thanks, Isaac. Resilience is believing that the comeback is greater than the setback. Resilience is choosing to move forward and keep fighting even when things get tough. And life can get pretty tough. This pandemic isn't going to be the worst thing that'll happen to us in life. However, it is a great opportunity that we were given to develop the life skill of resilience. The most successful people in life have developed this very characteristic. They wake up every day, focus on their goals, and never give up on them despite any setbacks they may face. So what does it take to get back up after you've been knocked down? It takes grit. It takes strength. It takes passion. Everyone is passionate about something. Whenever a passionate person discovers their inner strength, their resilience, they can conquer anything. That is when the comeback begins. A comeback is defined as a return that involves some type of improvement. The most successful people take those failures, shift their focus, and choose to view the setbacks in their lives as opportunities. Failing isn't bad. J.K. Rowling agrees, saying failure is so important. We speak about success all the time. It is the ability to resist failure or use failure that often leads to greater success. The ability she speaks of, the ability to benefit from failure, is resilience. I have watched many of you face setbacks and in turn develop the resilience we're talking about today. I believe that each and every one of you has the ability to take a setback and turn it into a comeback. I've grown up with you. I've watched you come back from all kinds of setbacks. Tests you failed, auditions where you didn't get the part you wanted, injuries that ruined your sports season, friendships that fell apart, family difficulties or tragedies that left you feeling defeated. In each of those cases, you have chosen to believe that this moment of failure 
was not the end of your story. You chose to look ahead and begin your comeback every single time. So now, with those failures as our stepping stones, adulthood is here. We are here. We made it to our graduation. And although it is nothing like we imagined it would be, it is kind of fitting for our class. A special graduation for a very special class. We are talented, we are passionate, and we are ready for our comeback. We are the Chestnut Ridge graduating class of 2020. I know that we can do amazing things in our lives because you all are amazing people. I know that our senior year didn't go as we had planned or hoped that it would, but we are resilient. We will be okay. As long as we stay focused on the comeback, then no setback will ever be too great for us to handle. I love you guys. Thank you for all of the memories. Now, I would like to introduce the next Senior Six speaker, my close friend, Emily Grace Clark. Thank you, Elise. Persistence and resilience only come from having been given the chance to work through difficult problems. Gever Tully. We, the class of 2020, have been given such a chance. A chance that none of us wanted and none of us could have foreseen. But this is only a small chapter in the book of our lives. And we will take this chance we've been given to develop our resilience. All of us have great futures ahead of us whether it is enrolling in college, going to trade school, or finding a job straight out of high school. Everyone has a plan or an idea of how we want to spend the rest of our lives. And although this bump in the road may not have been part of our plan, it has shown us how strong we truly are. Through this time, I've personally had the chance to slow down, take a breath, and relax a little. Typically, in the springtime, my life is filled with chaos, from softball games and practices, to planning both FFA and FBLA banquets, making plans for prom, and trying to train animals for the fair. Although this year was quite different, I have been able to think. Sometimes we need to stop and smell the roses. We all can get caught up in the hustle and bustle of life and forget to slow down sometimes. Throughout this time, I have chosen to rely on my faith, knowing that God is in control and will bring us through this storm in our lives. The chance to work through difficult problems has certainly been ours recently. The class of 2020 has battled through finishing our last moments in high school online. We have stayed away from our friends, ones we may no longer see in a few short months, in hopes of flattening the curve. And we have all made sacrifices, big and small, for our families and ourselves. We have battled through physical and emotional challenges. We have lost senior seasons and various competitions and trips that we all look forward to. I know many tears of sadness and disappointment were shed throughout this time, but now we may rejoice. Thanks to these difficulties we have faced, no battle will be too large for us. In the next few months, we will all be heading into a new chapter that will seem easier because we have battled through this difficult time with strength and resiliency. Soon, our friends in high school may just become acquaintances and we all may end up across the world doing various things. There is one thing that we all share in common though. It is our strength and resilience. We have bounced back and faced this battle head on and that is clear now and we will continue and will continue to be displayed as we continue on in our lives. We have lived through a difficult time and that is apparent. Class of 2020, we are stronger than ever and we will never forget this time in our lives together. Know that we have used this chance to develop our strength and resiliency. Whatever challenges lie ahead, I know each and every one of us are resilient enough to overcome them. If you ever find yourself doubting your strength, Remember this time in your life and how each and every one of us have shown great strength and resilience. Thank you. We will now hear from our next Senior Six speaker who is one of my close friends, 
Ms. Jamie Renee Emmerich. Thank you, Emily. It was January 8th, 2011. I was eight years old and just starting the second half of my third grade year. On that night, I received news that no eight-year-old should ever have to receive. I can still remember my mother's cracked voice from the other side of the phone. My brother, sister, and I were all at my aunt's house when it happened. I remember my aunt answering the phone, putting it on speaker, and holding it up to me and my sister. We had a house fire, came the shaken voice on the other side of the phone. Instantly, a feeling I can only describe as terror arose inside me. Every toy, every art project, every picture, every memory of my childhood home was decimated to a pile of ash. While we were blessed that no one was hurt by the fire, my eight-year-old self still felt the devastation heavily. Although I may not have been able to recognize it at that age, something beautiful arose from this tragedy. Family members, friends, and people we hardly even knew began pouring into my grandparents' house with money, clothes, blankets, and so much more. Caleb Mickle dumped his whole piggy bank to give to me and my siblings. Sam Four gave me a little blue purse that I still have to this day. My third grade teacher, Mrs. Kohler, delivered a pair of pajamas for each of my siblings and I. Although the devastation weighed heavily, the outpouring of love from our community weighed more. My family and I have now lived in a new beautiful home, making new memories for the past nine years. While some resilience comes from inside oneself, I believe true resilience comes from being able to rely on the people around us in our darkest hours. Sometimes life throws things our way that are too much for us to take on on our own. And it is, it is in these times that we must be able to let go and lean on other people to keep us upright. I believe we are living in one of these times right now. Our current circumstances have required sacrifices from us all. I was forced to give up playing the last season of the sport I love. We were all forced to give up the last three months of our high school experience, our last three months of being kids, essentially. While it would be easy to dwell on everything we have lost, I'm choosing to instead look to those around me, my family, my friends, and my community to keep me upright in this situation. Throughout this entire time, I've been amazed at the way the community has come together to try and give us seniors the recognition we have earned and make up for some of what we've lost. Parents, teachers, and administrators have all been devoting countless hours planning ways to make the best of the situation for us, and I could not be more grateful to them. Times like these are difficult for us all. But I believe, with the love of the people around us, we can truly get past anything. My experiences in my short 17 years of life have taught me that when you look to the people in your life, you can make beauty out of even the ashes. Class of 2020, we will make beauty out of these ashes by drawing strength from one another. Our next speaker will be the one and only Noah Christopher Hillegas. Thank you, Jamie. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we gather here to celebrate the accomplishments of the Chestnut Ridge Class of 2020. With the current pandemic going on, it is only fitting to talk about resilience. Resilience allows us to recover after a fall and adapt to whatever storms come our way. The graduating class of 2020 has learned to navigate through these very difficult last few months. I'm very proud to say we've learned to face life's difficulties head on. Now I'd like to share with you a true example of resilience. A young man that had committed the last four years working his tail off to become a starter on our high school football team. Day in, day out, lifting, training, feeding his body. He's even seen during the summer at the track pulling parachutes to get him faster and stronger, all for his team. His senior season is upon him. He's going to start both ways. Then a season ending injury occurs before he even gets to play one game. This young man showed us all what it means to be resilient. He demonstrated self-awareness, 
flexibility with his focus because now he's going to be faced with surgery and a long recovery period. And he showed us how to sustain a positive outlook. This man was told by his doctors that it would be between 8 and 12 months before he'd be able to walk again. For most, being told this news would be a punch in the stomach and a reality that some would just want to give up. But this person would not let his situation defeat him. He met his reality only like a middle linebacker would, head on. He never bathed in self-pity. He persevered through the hardships he endured. His leg, he used his leg exercises to not only strengthen his leg, but as a challenge to make himself better as he went through the pain. Never once did his contagious smile disappear from his face. After a mere three and a half months, he was able to walk through the halls of the school. It was a tremendous accomplishment that no one ever would have thought had happened, but he himself never doubted it. Less than one year after his injury occurred, he's back to his full 100%. Brandon Schaefer, could you please stand, of course virtually, so that we can properly thank our very own classmate and friend for teaching us how to be humble and resilient. Classmates, we're at a very important time in history. This is a time when, we, when only people who find within themselves the kind of resilience that Brandon demonstrated will be able to persevere in whatever comes our way. We are called to make changes for the better. I hope and pray that we can pick up one foot at a time and move forward in our future endeavors by serving one another and taking on the challenges we will face in our lives, always with a smile. I'd like to end with a quote from Serena Williams. I've grown most not from victories, but setbacks. If winning is God's reward, then losing is how he teaches us. Thank you all, and God bless. Now we will turn over the mic to my fellow classmate, Lydia Martin. Thank you, Noah. Motivational speaker and author Steve Maraboli once said, life doesn't get easier or more forgiving, we get stronger and more resilient. The term resilience has been used numerous times throughout this current situation we are all facing. But what does it actually mean to be resilient? The dictionary defines resilience as the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. So what does a kindergartner know about the word resilience? Most would not be able to correctly pronounce it, let alone fully understand what it means. Or do they? In 2007, our journey began. From the surface, kindergarten may just look like a time to learn about the basics, numbers, letters, and reading, as well as making crafts and new friends. But as kindergartners, it was so much more than that to us. We not only began learning how to read and write, but we were also taught skills that we were going to need throughout the rest of our lives. For instance, maybe we weren't picked to be line leader that day or weren't able to sit beside a friend at lunch. Instead of getting upset and dwelling on situations that we couldn't change, we were taught to keep going and move beyond our frustrations. Reflecting back on a kindergartner's problems may seem strange when trying to make a connection with resiliency, but those small problems were only the start of us finding our inner strength. As the years went on, we faced more obstacles, some as a class, but most occurring on personal levels. With each year and obstacle came more difficult challenges. As Steve Maraboli said, life doesn't get easier. We can all remember situations that have caused us grief, stress, worry, frustration, or hopelessness. Personally, facing my own challenges these past few years, it was sometimes hard to see a positive light. However, my faith in the Lord helped me to find peace through it all. As I stand here now, I know my purpose of my struggles. I have found my inner strength and have become more resilient because of it. Without facing tough times, none of us would have found our strength, endurance, and resilience. Every setback has a purpose. It gives us more motivation and the drive to keep going. No matter what our problems may have been, from the struggles of a kindergartner to the stress of a high schooler, it has all been preparation for us to take on life's challenges. The terms coronavirus and COVID-19 were not ones I heard prior to this year, and I assume the rest of our class feels the same way. Social distancing and quarantine never came across my mind as something we would have to face, but here we are. Little did we know that Friday, March 13th, 2020, would be our last time walking the halls of Chestnut Ridge. We all had dreams and aspirations for the rest of our senior year. Some had final sports seasons that have never begun. Others are missing out on state and national competitions, as well as trips and musical concerts. Prom and a traditional graduation ceremony are postponed. We all have so many thoughts and emotions during this time. It is upsetting to lose our final months with friends and teachers, 
making memories and completing the milestones. At first, it felt like the end. We couldn't understand why this would happen during our year. This was supposed to be our time. Well, today is our day. It is our time. Our time to be grateful and use the strength we have developed over the years at Chestnut Ridge. Our time to go out into the world and make a difference. We are a class of resilience. We don't give up. So today may not look like how we envisioned it, but we have overcome. To the class of 2020, this is only the beginning. Take this situation along with the many others that have come your way. Use your strength, keep your faith, and grow from it. Be resilient and be you. Our next speaker is Macy Elizabeth Reeder. Thank you, Lydia. Nelson Mandela once said, do not judge me by my success. Judge me by how many times I fell down and got back up again. The class of 2020 is not unlucky to be where it is. It is a gift. Our class collectively and each one of us individually has the opportunity to face adversity and to prevail. We will be stronger, wiser, and more prepared for the road ahead of us because of the times we have fallen and gotten back up again. We all have it in us to be resilient during this time of the unknown. By being resilient and having the capacity within us to overcome this difficulty, we can do anything. Throughout our lives, we have all faced some type of difficulty that required us to bounce back or get back up again. Life requires resiliency. This may have occurred for some of us more than others. One time for me was when I was about 10 years old and I had a one-year-old sister and an older sister. I was over the whole thing of being an older sister and not being the youngest anymore. When my mom told me my family was going to get a little brother, I cried my eyes out. I didn't want one, and now there were going to be two of them. As I was crying, I looked at my mom and asked, Mom, can you please get your tentacles tied? I don't want you to have another kid. Three kids is enough. My whole family was there and everyone was laughing at me for being upset, and I didn't know why. I mean, apparently, women don't have tentacles. Anyways, I could have chosen to be upset my entire life and never come out of my room to see them, or I could overcome this awful time in my life and be an awesome sister to them. If you ever have the chance to either get back up again or just sit there and mope, get back up and overcome this difficulty. What you will go through and how you will grow is worth it. Obviously, this pandemic has been a time when we all have experienced a fall, but quarantine has allowed us to do different things we normally wouldn't do. For me, I became a babysitter, teacher, student, chef, maid, principal, coach, and mom all during this time. Since my parents are essential workers, I had to pick up the slack. These jobs are not easy by any means. It may not have been how I plan to be spending my last few months of being a senior, but it has taught me so much. And I guarantee I will never forget it. Quarantine is like a gift in disguise if we only choose to use it. The class of 2020 is probably the most unique class there is. We need to own it. We need to show just how great each and every one of us truly is and that we know how to get back up when we fall and move forward. I'm so proud of everyone in our class. I am extremely happy that I got to spend the last 13 years of my life with everyone and happy I met all of you. As we all go our separate ways, we will also have a ton of memories from these past few years that we can remember for the rest of our lives. Good luck to all of you in your future endeavors and may you all have everything you could ever dream of. Remember, life requires resiliency. Be resilient. Thank you. Thank you, Macy, and thank you to all of our speakers that we've had tonight. Dr. Mark Kalawick, Superintendent of Chestnut Ridge School District, would like to make a few remarks. Good day. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all graduates, as well as parents, grandparents, teachers, board members, and any other friends or relatives that will be watching this video. Well, graduates, you made it. And I'm sure that people are watching this video are wondering how you made it. Today is a monumental day for you, not just because you're graduating, you're closing one chapter in your life. Today, I would like to talk about a couple of topics, one being resiliency, and the other would be the character of these students. First, on the subject of resiliency, you as a class have had to deal with some of the toughest times that any class has ever had to go through. 
I've witnessed this in my own home being, I have a senior daughter as well. However, I will also tie that word of resiliency to toughness or grit. That grit will carry you through some of the toughest times in your life, and you will come out on top. In the words of Winston S. Churchill, success is not final, failure is not fatal, and it's courage to continue that counts. Remember that in life, you will fail. You will lose at various things, and you will be criticized as well as complimented. How you handle those things will define who you are. As I view this class, I look at a class that has character, and I like to refer to that as the three A's. You have the academia in this class. As a matter of fact, I've just received a report yesterday on how our district had scored at the state level, and that class has helped send our school past 41 schools from the prior year. The second A, you have artistic people in this class. Once again, I don't think I've ever seen a class that has such artistic creativity. Parents, you maybe not know there is a plethora of singers and musicians in this class that do an amazing job. The last day is athleticism. This class is the first class since I've been here. We won numerous district championships in many sports and we have numerous students continuing their athletic career at Division I, Division II, and Division III colleges. I say to my staff quite often, idle hands are the devil's workshop. Well, parents, it's easy to see that this class didn't have too much idle time. This class is too busy making memories, developing leadership capabilities and characteristics, and making things happen. One of my favorite books I've read, and I've also had the opportunity to read to the kindergarten class this year was Dr. Seuss, To Places You Will Go. Trust me, class of 2020, you're going to go places. Remember, life isn't easy, and becoming successful is hard work. You'll be faced with challenges that at times seem monumental and overwhelming. That is a time in your life when you have to reach deep inside to the core values that are instilled upon you. Your family values you receive, and most importantly, the faith you have, because nothing is more remarkable than having faith. And whatever you're doing, don't be accepting of being good at being something. Be great. I want you to ponder this quote, good, to great, good is the enemy of great by Jim Collins. As part of the freedom to educate, I have found that the two best ways to educate yourself are to, number one, listen to your parents and your elders. I know this sounds a bit cliche, but it is so true. Your parents and elders have made mistakes that they don't want you to make. They don't want you to have to go through the same troubles and turmoil that they've had to go through. Number two, read. As an educational leader, I always seem to be reading something. Whether it be a book, administrative magazine or journal, an online article, a blog, or just a newspaper, some of the most outstanding books I've had the opportunity to read and I keep in my library are Good to Great by Jim Collins, Who Moved My Cheese by Spencer Johnson, and The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. The last book, The Total Money Makeover, that is one I'm still trying to get my wife to read. And if you were to ask me, Dr. K, how is that going for you? I would say, let's just say that's a work in progress. Seriously, I have a wonderful wife who supports me in performing the toughest yet most rewarding job in the entire world. In closing, I wish you all the best that life has to offer. I see in this class a group of people that in my heart, I know, you will be successful in whatever you do. And lastly, when you move on in life, remember these three things. First, there's no place like home, and you can always come home. Second, call home and keep in touch with your parents. They miss you and want to hear from you. Third, the friends you make in high school will be the best friends you have your entire life. Let them know how much you mean to them. Class of 2020, I wish you all the best life has to offer. Thank you, Dr. Kalawick. Mr. William Pataki, president of the Chestnut Ridge School Board, would like to make a few remarks. Chestnut Ridge class of 2020, we are here to honor your graduation from high school. 
is a time of celebration and a time of reflection. It isn't how you imagined it, but your time has come. At past graduation ceremonies, I would have the opportunity to look at the graduates. Some would be beaming with joy and confidence, ready to move forward with their lives. Some seemed a bit apprehensive, maybe not quite sure of what the future held for them. As I find myself staring at a camera today, instead of talking directly to you, it goes without saying that this is not a traditional time in which we currently live. Your senior year, as you know it, was suddenly changed. You got a new spring break. Then came the online assignments and online instruction. And then your expected time away from school was extended. You didn't get to do your senior skip day as planned. Instead, you were handed several months worth. And then the truth began to sink in. You were not going back to your high school, not as a student anyway. That part of your life had ended and you didn't get the chance to say goodbye to it in the way high school seniors always did. At the same time, the current world situation emphasizes how important your graduation and the education you received is. You are the future of our community, country, and our society. Now more than ever, we need young people like you capable of doing great things. We need engineers to solve problems and be innovative to keep our country competitive in a global economy. We need farmers to be able to develop new production methods and techniques to adapt to changes in climate and markets so that we all can continue to eat. We need medical practitioners and researchers to keep us healthy more than ever before. We need pastors to help keep our moral fabric of our country together. We need soldiers in the military to protect us against outside forces that would like to see our way of life implode. We need teachers to inspire and educate our future generations. These are just several examples of where you and your classmates will make a significant positive impact in the future. You are entering a very different world from the one you expected. It is a world that needs you. You are the most unique graduating class in history, and perhaps when this chapter in history is completely written, the most important graduating class. Each and every one of you in your own special way has the ability to be successful and accomplish great things for yourself, your family, your community, and your country. I encourage you to never stop learning because true power and potential be comes from knowledge. Never stop trying, be resilient, and your hopes, dreams, and aspirations will come true. And I know, your parents and guardians and relatives know, your, your teachers and coaches and pastors know, Dr. K, knows that you are fully capable of the journey that lies ahead of you because we have watched you in your daily successes big and small in the classroom on the athletic fields in the gymnasiums and within your extracurricular activities keep showing that same creative thinking grit determination and resiliency and you will continue to succeed it will just be on a bigger stage I was once told that a commencement speech is supposed to contain some kind of essential information, some piece of wisdom from an aged speaker to a youthful listener. So here it is. Nothing in life is better than being needed. Class of 2020, I wish you all the best and may the good Lord guide and protect you in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pataki. The Dr. James Barefoot Community Service Award will be pre presented next by Mr. William S. Pataki. At this time, it is my distinct honor to present the Barefoot Community Service Award. This is the only award the school board presents at the graduation ceremony. It is given in honor to late Dr. James Barefoot, who served many years on the Chestnut Ridge School Board. It is presented to the senior student who has done the most to aid the community, our honoree this year has volunteered numerous hours of service at the Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh while assisting in many local performing arts events. This year's winner is Isaac Sims. Thank you, Mr. Pataki. And now, Mr. Max Shoemaker, principal of the Chestnut Ridge Senior High School 
will recommend the class of 2020 their diplomas. Friends, relatives, students, faculty, school board members, and Dr. Kalawik, I have checked the records and found that these members of the class of 2020 have successfully completed all requirements set forth by the Pennsylvania Department of Education and the Chestnut Ridge Board of School Directors. I therefore declare the class of 2020 eligible for graduation. It is my privilege to introduce to you the 2020 salutatorians. The class rank GPA is Macy Reeder. The class rank preceding GPA salutatorian is Elise Barnes. And at this time, it is my honor to present to you the valedictorian for the class of 2020, Noah Hillegas. Brady James Allison, honors. Andrew Joseph Angelari, Lindy Jean Barefoot, High Honors, Adriana Haley Barnes, Honors National Honor Society, Elise Morgan Barnes, High Honors National Honor Society. Ethan Thomas Biggle. Clint Russell Bentz. Robbie Wayne Bisbing. Devin Douglas Black, High Honors. Keegan Daniel Blau Demoncus. Linnea Diane Bowen. Honors. Gary Lee Bowser. Caden Jacob Bowser. Selena Faith Bowser, High Honors. Tyler Russell Bowser, High Honors. Isabel Renee Boyer, High Honors, National Honor Society. Dallas Marie Page Brown, High Honors. Margaret Naomi Bruning, Honors.
Brittany Dawn Burkett. Honors. Jaden Noel Calhoun, High Honors, National Honor Society. Griffin Craig Callahan, Honors. Jimmy Eldon Chamberlain. Kimberly Catherine Clark. Zane Allen Clar, High Honors. Camden Ross Clapper, High Honors, National Honor Society. Emily Grace Clark, High Honors, National Honor Society. Malin Gabriel Clark, Honors. Haley Marie Claycomb. Taylor Dylan Claycomb, Honors. Hannah May Coral, High Honors, National Honor Society. Kirsten May Coral, Honors. Dalton Ray Crawford. Jessica Nicole Doss, High Honors, National Honor Society. Stephen Paul Davis, Honors. Isabella Mercedes Dibert, High Honors. Jacob Matthew Dickin, High Honors. Alana Maria Deal, 
high honors. Eden Ray Dillo. Darren Lee Ernest. Jamie Renee Emmerich. High Honors, National Honor Society. Brittany Elaine Ewald, High Honors, National Honor Society. Colin Seth Fetter. Olivia Page Flegel. Emily Jean Folk, High Honors, National Honor Society. Samantha Lee Four, High Honors. Rhett Paul Frazier, Honors. Brady Kenneth Graham, Honors. Charity Estelle Taylor, Hannah. Jeremy Raymond Harris. Allison Ann Harder, Honors. Alexander Gabriel Herline, Honors. Connor Wesley Thomas Hirschberger, High Honors. Noah Christopher Hillegas, High Honors, National Honor Society. Nathan Russell Holderbaum. Seth Rain Holderbaum. Madeline Claire Hyde, High Honors, National Honor Society.
Landon Rural Hickus. Evan Alexander Kiggerice, High Honors, National Honor Society. Emma Page Kaiser, High Honors. Megan Rose Kaufman, High Honors. National Honor Society. Dwayne James Nisley, High Honors. Sophia Marie Kramer. Gunner Lee Lehman. Kennedy Ann Leparati. High Honors, National Honor Society. Isaac Andrew Little, High Honors, National Honor Society. Benjamin Edward Livingston, High Honors, National Honor Society. Lydia Adele Martin, High Honors, National Honor Society. Trey Charles Maxwell, High Honors, National Honor Society. Wyatt McIntyre Maxwell. Honors. Lee Harvey McCready. Honors. Addison Riley McMakin. Aaron Lynn McVicker, honors. Cameron Norman Metz. Caleb Troy Allen Mickle, honors. Brady Ryan Miller, high honors. Colby James Miller.
Ethan James Miller, High Honors, National Honor Society. Rebecca Lynn Miller. Isabella Avery Mischler, High Honors, National Honor Society. Kirsten Page Mock, High Honors, National Honor Society. Travis Joseph Mock. Stephen Arthur Morrison. Scott Lauren Mallory, honors. Mason William Osman, honors. Matthew Grant Osman, honors. Blaze Elijah Ott. Ethan Roger Parks, honors. Kayla Marie Pennebaker, honors. Kira Lynn Pittman, high honors, National Honor Society. Allison Don Price, Honors, National Honor Society. Brittany Nicole Price, Honors. Macy Elizabeth Reeder, High Honors, National Honor Society. Carly Ann Regal, Honors.
Tristan Elvin right now are. Evan Kendall Roos, honors. Isaiah John Rose. Kylie Dawn Ross, High Honors, National Honor Society. Brandon Ryan Schaefer, High Honors, National Honor Society. Isaac Glen Allen Sims. Benjamin Daniel Smith, honors. Hannah Page Smith, High Honors, National Honor Society. Noah Edward Smith, honors. Matthew Randall Stewart, honors. Angel Lynn Vahonsky, high honors. Hannah Audrey Walter, high honors. Courtney Jane Weaver, High Honors, National Honor Society. Joshua Paul Whetstone, Honors. Seth Michael Williams. Jonathan Allen Wilson.
As a prelude to my last official act with this group of students, I would like to express my gratitude to each individual who made the class of 2020 an outstanding one. Now, by the authority vested in me by the Chestnut Ridge School Board of Directors and the Pennsylvania Department of Education, I declare you graduates of Chestnut Ridge High School. Thank you. Please rise for the alma mater. Look up senior year. What will you find under it? Memories. If you ask anyone about their senior year, what will they say? They'll talk about the memories they made. Now we may not have all the memories we planned for this year, and trust me, I wanted my senior year to be just like what you see in the movies. But the memories we have of this place were not made in just one year. We've been making memories ever since we started this journey. And it's my honor today to talk about those memories and lessons we have learned and have of Ridge. We spent the last five years in this building and there are so many memories that we can carry on with us after we're gone. One could be that we've won almost all of the pep rallies that we've been here, that we have been a part of here. And two, no matter what happened to us, the teachers have always been beside us. For Mr. Skiles saying, make sure to use your resources, to Mrs. Wallach cheering for us at all of our sporting events. But something that I am sad about is that I won't have the memory of saying thank you to all the teachers and everyone a part of this school that has helped me to become the person I am today. And these teachers I feel have, not, have done that not just for me, but for a lot of students, like Mrs. McDonald and how and everything she does for students and making them succeed at FBLA, as well as Mr. Lazier, who does for the students in forensics. And even teachers I didn't have, like Mrs. Boyce or Mrs. Glass. We would see each other in the hall and we could still have a five minute conversation. These memories and millions more have taught us lessons that I hope to never forget because there could be a chance that they'll be needed in the future. Walt Disney once said, times and conditions change so rapidly that we must keep our aim constantly focused on the future. And the teachers that we've had have helped us to prepare us for the future. What Walt Disney said is true. Because look what has happened to us in the last three months. Our world has changed. And I hope the class of 2020 will continue that change. If you've been to past ceremonies, they will say how they're going to change the world. But as a class, we've already started that change. How schools teach, how students are able to learn online, and how we've brought not only students and teachers together, but, stu but teachers and parents together in a way no other class has done before. We've already started making it a better tomorrow by learning from what we've done during this and how we will react to it in the future. As the teachers have taught us and my fellow speakers have said, let's make this a building block and not a stumbling stone in our future. In my final thoughts, I'd like to thank my parents and grandparents for their 18 years of support. And a special thank you to someone who has been with us since middle school, a person who has always supported us and taught us how to become better people. Mr. Max Shoemaker, from the football field to the always open door of your office, we're happy to see you going into retirement, 
but we are sad that the other students will not receive your positive influence. The class of 2020 thanks you for everything you've done for us. And thank you for everything that you've done at Ridge. And to my classmates, go out and show the world that the class of 2020 can rise above and do great things, no matter what we face. Thank you. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road Time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go So make the best of this test and don't ask why It's not a question but a lesson learned in time It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life So take the photographs and still frames in your mind Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial For what it's worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life Something unpredictable, but in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life